Peter, the technology as we know moved forward and I understand there are two more processes which are getting more and more attention and deliver better components to customers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, correct me. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, that's right, absolutely right. You know, what we noted, or let's say, yeah, what the industry noted, uh, the coating is formed, you said it before, when the particle melts and then will be accelerated and will be thrown on the surface. Also, as fast as the process is faster, or let's say as more accelerated, we, we can propel the, uh, the powders, as less time the powder has to oxidize from the environment. So they said, okay, we need an, uh, an additional process where we are faster. And so then they developed the HF process, high velocity oxyfuel process. Here, I have one gun here, which is using the kerosene and oxygen as combustion. And the other one, HF process, is uh, this gun here. This is also an HF gun, high velocity oxyfuel gun, which is using either hydrogen oxygen or uh, they can also use propane, propylene, natural gas as fuel gas. But with this process we are much faster, so with this process we achieve um, a particle impact velocity of around six, seven hundred meters per second when you compare with the flame process where we are in the area of about 100 to 200 meters per second. So these coatings, when we produce this coating with this technology, with this HF spray technology, we create denser coating, less oxide content in the coating, and basically foreseen for coatings which protects the part against wear. Mainly very typical materials are the carbide coatings, tungsten carbide, chrome carbide coatings, where we have really hot coatings, more than 1000 hardness weakers O3. When we compare it with the other coatings, much, much, much harder. That means also more wear resistance. Peter, a couple of questions from my side here. Yeah. First question is, you said you have different guns. Yeah. So what does it mean? What is the difference between them? Why people decide for liquid or decide for uh, another gun? This is also a good question. <laughs> First, we start with gas fuel. The gas fuel uh, is from the installation point of view a little more difficult than this one because gas installation as soon as you are using hydrogen uh, you need all this you need to fulfill all the safety aspects so hydrogen oxygen so people or customers sometimes are afraid of hydrogen so they say okay let's go for a kerosene gun the liquid fuel gun kerosene is everywhere available in the world especially in the at the each airport you will find kerosene in each country hydrogen Propane, propylene insulation, uh, yeah, I told you it's a, a, it needs a certain effort to do the insulation. Then uh, we have noted that this gun, the, the uh, HF gas fuel gun, is more, let's say, more famous in the aircraft industry, turbine industry, because they have a lot of different coatings and a lot of different specifications. And with this gun, you can really fiddling around with the parameters to get the given specification from the customer. This gun is more, we find this, uh, this gun more in the oil and gas industry, where you have mainly one, one application, you spray carbide coating, tungsten or chromium carbide coatings, and then it's, it's a working horse. It's a working horse, that means you need here 900, around 900 liter oxygen oh. and 20 liter, and 20 liter per hour kerosene, but 900 liter oxygen, you can imagine if we fit it around with a parameter, it's coming 910 liter or 900 or 89 liter, it's not a big difference. But with this gun here, you will call it the kind of shroud gas, and with this shroud gas we can very fine, let's say, uh, derogate or control the speed of the particles and the temperature of the particles. And that's the reason if you have very difficult, let's say not difficult, very different coatings, various coatings, you can uh, fiddling around more with the parameters to get applications. That's the reason this gun is more or less in the aircraft and turbine industry, whether this one we will find more in the oil and gas industry where we need a working horse, one application. That's full power working. That's right. It's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can also read you see here also you have a double injection. You can also feed more power powder than here. You have only one injector for axle injection, one hose, 
with here you can feed more uh, materials per hour compared with this one but with this one you have a slightly high deposition efficiency because it's a, a slightly hotter process yeah you mentioned two very important things uh, one side is a deposition efficiency which means how much of material really lands as a coating yeah. high deposition efficiency less material costs you have and second question is a feed rate and productivity exactly. can you tell me what are the typical deposition efficiencies for this type of processes and what are the typical productivity values? Exactly, we call it application rate. Application rate tells you how is my feed rate in gram per minute yeah. and what is my deposition, deposition efficiency in percentage. That means how many percentage of my material I feed into the gun yeah. will be at the end on a certain surface in percentage. So this is a good question because it depends what you are doing. If you are using expensive powders, let's say specified powders, like we have it in the aircraft industry, expensive powders, so you are looking more and more for the deposition efficiency because the deposition efficiency is then a lot of money. It can cost you thousands of money, 1% less. I had one time a customer, he asked, uh, we, we called him, we have a deposit efficiency of 50% and we arrived 49%. He said, no, no, I do not accept the machine. And then uh, I call it hey, 1%. He said, but 1% cost me 10,000 bucks a month. Expensive powders. Now this gun has a slightly high deposition efficiency than this one. But with this one, you can spray more material per hour. That means if you can, sp if you can spray more materials per hour, more powder per hour, you can produce more parts. But now the question is, what is the production capacity? What is the production? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, how do the customer produce? Do, does he have mass production, individual production? And you see in the, in the let's say, aircraft or turbine industry or let's say some chop shoppers, they have individual production. And they do not have, sometimes they have specifications, uh, sometimes they don't have specification. So with this one, he's really flexible, but here, one application, very working horse, fantastic on for spraying mass production, big parts, very big parts, because you tell me for what is the deposition efficiency that we talk when we talk about the carbide, the tungsten carbide, you're near about 45 percent, uh, 50, 55, around 50, let's say about 50, and uh, chromium carbide, a little bit low, a little bit low, about 10, 10 percent, 5 to 10 percent, it's below, but then we have to talk about the coat, uh, coating density because tungsten carbide has about 14-15% gram per cubic centimeter coating energy. With chromium, you have a coating density of 7-8. So uh, it depends now, uh, does he really think about the good hardness then because tungsten carbide is a little bit harder than chromium oxide. But I think we have to think in the future uh, more and more as good as possible and not as good as, uh, as good as needed and not as good as possible. And that we have to rethink a little bit. Do we go for chromium carbide, tungsten carbide? What kind of gun? Because why do we have such kind of different kind of uh, different guns? Because it's always three questions customer has. <laughs> what is my application performance? That's the reason why we develop guns with uh, high uh, application performance. Then the next is the investment. How much does it cost? And my whole investment. And then the maintenance work. What is my maintenance work? In my, in my 30 years, oh, uh, what's the lifetime of the barrel? What's the lifetime of the nozzle electrode? But there is not a clear figure about that because it depends what he's doing. Very interesting. So as I understand, we have here two really great processes related to high velocity oxygen fuel. Yep. And it's up to customer to decide what is important productivity or efficiency. Depending on your material and application, also the process parameters can strongly impact the lifetime of your components like nozzles and injections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I see, it's as in many technologies. Yeah, fantastic. I can tell you, it's a fantastic <laughs> technology. You can talk about stresses in the coating. Here you have less stress. Here you have compressive stresses. Tens you can fiddle. Uh, that's a fantastic. I love this technology. That's the reason why I'm already working more than 30 years <laughs> for this technology. Peter, I'm very happy that you found time to share your passion and experience with this technology with exactly. us. Exactly. It's, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. <laughs>